Hi guys, welcome to our Daily Encounter. Today we begin to read about the various offerings in the book of Leviticus. And Leviticus starts off with five offerings that the people could give to the Lord. Uh, we have today the burnt offering. We also have the grain offering and the peace offerings that they could offer. And tomorrow we'll read about the sin offering and the guilt offering. But these were the offerings that the people could offer up to God. And this is a way that they would interrelate with God uh, as they, uh, you know, express this covenantal relationship that they have with him. And I'm afraid that oftentimes perhaps we think too negatively about these various offerings. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we, as New Testament believers, as people on this side of the cross, we see how insufficient they were. And we could probably see how laborious they were as well. And we might begin to have kind of a negative uh, feeling towards these various offerings, even as we're reading through the Bible and we get to Leviticus and we might think, how, why did God uh, call, um, instruct them to make these uh, detailed sacrifices and offerings for all these various reasons and purposes? But we should never think of these in a negative way. Yes, we should in comparison to Christ's sacrifice, see them as insufficient. And by means of exalting the wonderful and precious sacrifice we have in Christ, we should view them in that way. But in and of themselves, these were a great uh, blessing to the original people who were, were given these offerings. Uh, think about these people who are wandering through the wilderness. Uh, they had just seen how powerful, how excellent, how majestic God was he had manifested himself at the top of Mount Sinai and he was so holy they couldn't even go on the mountain at all. Um, they couldn't even touch the mountain. And they saw the thunderings and the lightning and, and the smoke and the fire and everything that came with the presence of God on Mount Sinai. And you can imagine as they are entering into a covenant with God, they might think, how in the world are we ever going to relate with a God like that? Well, these offerings gave them a means by which they could do that. And it was a great blessing for them to, to say, you know what? Yes, I am a holy God, but I'm giving you a means by which you can interact with me and have a relationship with me. And so that would be seen in a very positive way if you were a part of this generation that was receiving these instructions. And so if you had a heart of thanksgiving to God, God gave you a way to express that through the burnt offerings or if you uh, had an abundant crop that year and you wanted to honor God with that crop, you could bring the grain offering. Or if you wanted to make a vow to God or, or give thanks to God for uh, the in the fulfillment of a vow or something along those lines, you could offer up the peace offering. If, if you sinned against God and you messed up and you became guilty, there's a sacrifice, there's an offering for that. And not only that, not only... Is it, uh, uh, from a human standpoint, a way in which they could interact with God? But it, from God's standpoint, it was a way in which God could be pleased with the people. Time and time again, we see this phrase, a soothing aroma. And that way that could be translated uh, is a pleasing aroma to God. As they offered up these various offerings, it was very pleasing to God. So on God's side, he's, he's receiving pleasure from these offerings. On their side, they're having a way to contact and interact with this holy God. It's a wonderful thing, a wonderful uh, transaction that would take place through these offerings. And so, so they should be seen as a very precious thing when viewed from their standpoint. And as we think about it from New Testament believers, of course, we have Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of all the offerings. Um, he is the means by which or he was the burnt offering, the one who offered himself up wholly to God. Uh, he is. He was also the grain offering who gave up his human flesh on the cross. He's also the peace offering. He's the means by which we have peace with God. Uh, he's also the sin offering, obviously, with the shedding of his blood. He's also the guilt offering who, who took away our guilt. Uh, he is the fulfillment of all the offerings. But that doesn't mean that there aren't offerings we can't offer God today. And these are not in connection to the forgiveness of sins and things like that. Uh, those things were accomplished through Jesus Christ. He's the means by which we have a position before God. But there are certain offerings we can offer up uh, in a practical way. 
For instance, Romans chapter 12 talks about offering up our bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, uh, which is our reasonable service. Right, that's our worship is when we offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice, not as an animal that dies and then it's sacrificed and that's it. But each and every day offering up our bodies for God's service uh, when a decision has to be made between the pleasures and the comforts of the flesh and serving the Lord, we choose the Lord above those things and we sacrifice our own fleshly desires for the sake of the glory of God. That's an offering we can offer up. Also, our lips can offer up certain sacrifices. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15, it says, Through him then, that is through Christ then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that gives thanks to his name. A lot of that language borrows from Leviticus, from the idea of offerings. Uh, so we can offer up a, a, a word of thanksgiving to the Lord, continually offering up a sacrifice of praise to God. And that would be like, like a, a great offering that is being brought up before God. But not only that, we can also do good works and help other people out. That's a means by which we can uh, offer a sacrifice to God. In verse 16 of Hebrews 3, it says, And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. And there you have an allusion to the soothing aroma. When we are serving other people, when we're loving other people, when we receive other people with open arms, and we're sharing our things, we're not being greedy, that's a soothing aroma to God. This is a sacrifice in which God is pleased. And so we too now have offerings and sacrifices we can offer up to God in, in our inner relating with God. The ultimate sacrifice is done through Christ. But that doesn't mean we can't still offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice. It doesn't mean that we can't still offer up the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to God. And that we can also... Uh, sacrifice and doing good and sharing with others as as we read. And when we do these things, it draws us all the more closer to God. God is pleased and we draw closer to the Lord. And as such, our relationship with him solidifies and grows stronger and stronger each and every day. And we get to enjoy all the more this covenantal relationship that we have with the Lord. And so we too can offer up these offerings that will draw us closer to God. Uh, similar to what they experienced in the Old Covenant. So these are some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.